the hardcover book is I no longer have on either that or volume two. You can take that one with you. Oh, wow. Wonderful. Yeah, I saw this on the Amazon site, and uh, I saw that there was a uh, an Asimov, uh, uh, you know, version, yeah. Asimov letter, letters, and then these. Yeah, there's are another one like that that's John W. Campbell with Isaac Asimov and uh, A.E. Van Vogel. Yeah. In that case, it's their letters to to Campbell as well as Campbell's. They're amazing to read, you know, the commentary yeah. and his uh, suggestions yeah. to the authors and uh, like, and you know, of course, I was interested in what he had to say to L. Ron Hubbard, and I saw a little bit of that. In uh, you know, his yeah, they had a falling life. out towards the end. They had a falling out when when uh, when uh, Hubbard went to uh, Scientology. Uh -huh. Yeah, I and I think the main reason they did is because Campbell really didn't understand what Hubbard was talking about. Yeah. Well, I know there was a controversy, I don't know if you remember this, but um, when Hubbard started talking about past lives, he well, ran that was Don. Lot. that was Don Purcell that had to fight with him over that. Right. I was there when I heard the big fight. Oh yeah, you actually overheard them arguing? Yeah. Can you give us a little flavor of that? Was it like real shouting type of thing, or was it just uh, gentlemanly discussion? <laughs> yeah, I think it was more gentlemanly than anything, but uh, per see, Purcell, during that period, up to that time, psychology, psychiatry was just was not supported by the public like it is nowadays. And uh, there was a clinic in, in uh, Topeka, the uh, Manager clinic, manager brothers had set up a clinic, psychiatric clinic there that was having success. And Don Purcell wanted the foundation in Wichita to have success like the manager clinic. And he felt that if Hubbard started talking about past lives, it would discredit them so much that they would, wouldn't have any possibility of having credit, of having uh, success. So, uh, he didn't want Hubbard to mention anything about past lives. And uh, Hubbard, Hubbard's whole attitude was, well, I'm a researcher, and, uh, and uh, what I find is what I find. If it works, this is what you use. It doesn't have anything to do with whether it's real or not, just whether it works. And that's what the big uh, falling out was, was about. Yeah. In addition to which, uh, remember, um, Remember, you probably know that uh, Purcell had bought out the uh, bankruptcy in the federal court of the first foundations, and, and as a, as a, uh, because of that, uh, he pretty well owned Dianetics and everything in it, and uh, he he offered Hubbard a hundred dollars a lecture for him to lecture, and so in a, in a sense. Hubbard felt constrained because now he was owned by somebody right. instead of his own man. So when he did leave, uh, there was a fellow by the name of, uh, um, not Malone, it was, uh, I can't think of his name right now, I usually know it, that whenever Hubbard got in trouble, he'd call this fellow on the phone and this fellow would come into wherever Hubbard was and he'd do Hubbard's dirty work. And uh, he, he had this guy go into the foundation and open up the, the uh, metal cabinet that had all of Hubbard's lectures in, a whole bunch of them. And he had him run a magnet up and down those lectures. So that's when Hubbard left. Hubbard had his own copies, but these were Purcells, you see, that he paid $100 a, a night for. Wow. And uh, that's how... <coughs> When Hubbard left, uh, Purcell really had nothing left to sell anymore. He did have a uh, processing center that I'd worked at a little bit, but uh, people were going at, were attracted to the main man, not to Purcell. Now, in order to try to get something started, after I'd gone, Purcell published a book by uh, a fellow by the name of Lynn Sterling. Uh, that 
was like science of survival, but it was oriented towards justifying homosexuality. Uh, Lynn was a homosexual. I've become friendly with Lynn too, he was a nice fellow. And uh, that was the last book that uh, I believe that Purcell ever published. I don't even recall the name of it. Was that in, uh, this is still in Phoenix or where? In Wichita. In Wichita, yeah. okay. I was gone by then, but uh, Lynn got upset with Hubbard's Science of Survival because uh, in there he had said that homosexuals were 1.1 1 .1 or lower. Right. So he set out to prove otherwise to show that there was a whole uh, up and down tone of, of uh, homosexuals. And that's what Purcell published was that book. Yeah. I've never seen it. I'd like to get a copy sometime just see what it would look like. Yeah, if you ever think of the name of it, maybe it's somewhere online, yeah. you know, do right. a search. Well, Purcell <clears throat> was another sci-fi writer. <clears throat> no, he was, uh, Don Purcell was, uh, it was like a businessman, right? That oh. uh, was a friend. Yeah, Purcell was a, a um, originally was a taxi cab driver. Mm -hmm. And uh, he invested money in oil wells that uh, came through around Wichita. He became rather wealthy, and then he invested more money in, in uh, real estate, building new houses in a house division. So he had the money, so when he, when he went to federal court, he was able to buy out diabetics, including all the bankruptcy debts. That's how he ended up with it. 